Hello and good morning everybody. Uh, my name is Dalton Francis. Um, I'm an education consultant for um, Behaviour Watch. Okay, so the first thing, who am I? Um, I was previously a, a pastoral um, deputy manager um, in a special school in Birmingham. Um, I've got over 10 years experience of working in education. Um, I'm a previous Behaviour Watch user, so I used Behaviour Watch for five years um, successfully <clears throat> in a very large special school. Um, I've also been a pastoral, so I started as pastoral learning support staff um, in the classroom at Lindsworth School in Birmingham. So where to start? Um, so we're going to look at um, a clear strategy employed um, to each school bespoke to the uh, demographics. So this is um, what the system can actually do. So the phase of education, local population practices will be reviewed regularly and refined over time by using the system. Um, a balance of positive reinforcement, modeling of good behaviors for learning with clearly communicated approaches for dealing with poorer behavior. Um, a support culture and ethos within the school, senior leaders promoting best practice to all staff members with regards to behaviour management and um, pedagogy. A strong process of capturing and using data to manage behaviour, regularly updated records uh, which are monitored on a live basis, enduring intervention happens in real time when incidents take place. Now, what is Behaviour Watch? <clears throat> So Behaviour Watch is an advanced um, behaviour and safeguarding solution which provides schools the data they need to support their behaviour policy, uh, provides all staff a secure platform to report behaviour and safeguarding with instant communication to the DSLs when necessary. Um, what we found, um, it helped the schools, uh, so truanting fell by 60%, which is fantastic. Year on year, reductions in negative behaviour and, in and incidents. Uh, we've had a drastic reduction in incidents uh, to DSL notifications within our schools. Um, positive behaviour outweighed negative by two to one after implementation. So you, you, you'll know that um, that is quite a, a big figure um, and a, a, a quite a big change um, in a lot of our schools. Safer and more effective tracking um, of the at-risk children, which is really important. Now, all I'm going to do is um, I'm going to log into the system. So it is uh, web-based. You can access it on any device which has a internet browser and internet access. So when you log into the system, every staff member will have a username, password, and a PIN. All of your data is kept on free UK servers. And the reason we keep it on free UK servers is if one server goes down, um, we still got two. So it means your data is very secure and the system is always up and running. This will also help with your access levels. So the access levels will be linked to the individual members of staff's username, password, and PIN. As you log into the system, the first thing you'll see is the dashboard. So all of these are different applications. Now you can change these applications to suit, your, suit yourself. Um, you can message from within the system to other members of other members of staff, groups of staff, individual members of staff. Um, you can attach files also. You can also have sticky items, which is quite cool because what you can actually do is you can sticky an item and it will stay at the top of the list um, until the member of staff's read it. So if it's something quite important, um, that can keep you in the loop. Now, the attendance app. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take you through um, the journey of a school day. So the first thing that um, would happen when a, a, a child comes into school was was would be um, in their form group, um, they would actually um, have registration. So you can take registration through the app and you can also take it through the attendance tab and it takes you to the same place. So I click on the attendance tab 
and choose my class. If there's a timetable on here for that member of staff, it will automatically fire up with the class that they're taking the registration for. We do have a uh, quick function here, so you can actually select all. Um, you've got all of your DFE codes in there. You can put comments in there if you need to, and then you press save. For all of your students that are absent, you can actually click on the absence button. The system can be set so it can automatically mark those students as an N, which is no reason. Um, so what that does is the teachers in the classroom or uh, TAs, whoever's taking the register, can um, quickly just see who's in and who's not. If they're late, you can click on the late button and it will tell you exactly how many minutes late they are. If you need to change it, you can you can change that. You can put your comments in as well and then just press continue. So that'll be your attendance taken. So at the close of registration, your admin staff will go into attendance monitoring. So you can see those three students that I've um, actually logged as absent. Um, you're, whoever's doing the attendance monitoring can actually see if they've taken a phone call, they can actually just click on authorize. Authorize it with the right DFE code. They can authorize the absence for the whole day. And if they want to put any comments in, they can and just press save. And you'll see once I press save here, that student has disappeared from the list. Now you've still got two students and these two students um, haven't had a phone call for them. Um, explaining their absence. So what you can do down here is it says say it says um, send text message to two students. So all you do is you just click on um, send text message and it will send a message out to those students. So we let you choose the the template. So uh, for example, it might say um, please contact the school um, as your child is not in school today. Now the next thing you want to do is look at reports for that. So what we can actually do is just click on uh, the attendance reports. So I'm gonna look at the authorization breakdown. So I might want to look at everybody that is between 80 and uh, say 95%. So if I click on goal, that's everybody that's between 80 and 95%. So I can actually get that information within seconds. If I wanted to um, have a report which was color coded, um, this is something that will just automatically color code it for you so you can actually see um, who's absent. You do also get the option of uh, changing the colors and changing the levels as well so it will stand out to you. So again, when we're talking about that, that quick intervention, um, you can look at these reports, it stands out to you and then you can do something about it quickly. We can also have an attendance diamond. So um, if you upload the pictures into the system, it will actually show you what level of attendance they're at and it will actually show their faces. So this is something that um, can be um, shown in the classroom. We've got an attendance certificate. But with the attendance certificate, it will give you a full breakdown for that individual of their attendance. So you've got a pie chart with a breakdown of their DFE codes walk in, walk out, so it will show you um, whether they're um, taking more mornings off or than, than afternoons or vice versa. And it will also show you uh, a breakdown of their DFE codes. So you can see um, in the AM period, uh, they're 66.67% and they've been uh, marked 32 times. You can also email this out to whoever it needs to go to. So you can choose the parts that you want to email out click on next choose who you want to email it out to if it's uh, someone external like a social worker you can just click on next and put the email address in click on email and email it out securely so all emails sent from the system are encrypted now if you wanted to look um, say at David's attendance in picture form I could use this information here so that is the attendance for the whole school now we've got the filter tool which is really powerful so if I go into the filter tool and I choose David and it's going to show David's attendance for this academic year so you can see how quick and easy you can actually get that information so you might be asking questions uh, around um, January what what happened there 
what happened at that point there, what happened at that point there. So you can you get that story of their attendance. If I wanted to um, compare and see uh, has David's attendance gone up or down, what I can actually do is click on the compare button and that creates a B filter. If I choose the B filter and choose David again, if I look at when forward, I can see my time frames. I'm going to look at last academic year. So what I can do is I can compare David from this year to, to last year. I can actually do uh, five comparisons, so that will go up to an E filter. So you can um, look at it in uh, terms, academic years, weeks in the year, weeks in the term, days. All of this information can be exported as well to um, Word or Excel if you need to. Okay, so that covers um, our monitoring and reports around attendance. So we have got lots of reports. Yep. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to go back to and talk about behavior. So if we are looking at um, David's behavior within the school, um, we've got these things here which are called slips so these are electronic forms and they're built around your behavior policies so something like a merit would be a positive uh, these yellow behaviors and serious incidents would be a negative and something like an accident form would be an information form it's just important to know that when i come to the reports and i'm filtering in reports which i'll show you um, when we get there so logging a positive there's two ways to log a positive. So you can actually log it through the slip. Remember, these can be called whatever you want. If I go down to complete merit, you'll see I get a box so I can actually choose the student I am looking for. If I'm logging for multiple students, I can click on the green cross and I can log for them all at the same time and it will go off into their individual files. I can also choose a whole form, class, or year group, and I can log for a maximum of 40 at a time, or I can choose select none, and then choose exactly who I want to log this form for. I can write text in the description. So um, if we say um, David was helping others. So what we'll do is we'll set the system up around your, your subjects that you have in your school. Um, if there is a timetable um, attached to the system, when that teacher logs in and if they log in in that time period, it will also it will show the subject, the period of the day and the location. And the great thing about that is that will give you great patterns and trends so you can actually see exactly um, what subject your behavior is happening in, your positive and your negative. Um, what period of the day so you can look at what the times are and what locations. So again, looking at your data, um, you can actually really pinpoint where it's happening and you can put those interventions in place, which I'll show you when it comes to the reporting. If I wanted to um, communicate very quickly with other members of staff, I can actually choose the members of staff that I want to inform. And once I've completed the form and I press save and close, it will automatically just email these forms to uh, the, the members of staff. You, these can be linked to a real-time notification where it can actually send an email to the parent. So what you're doing is you're increasing uh, that communication with the parent. The parent sees the positive behavior straight away. As soon as that child gets home, they can get that positive reinforcement and they're more likely to come back the next day and display that positive behavior again. So. You can have as many of these fields and they can be called whatever you want. You can have as many tick boxes as you want. So we're gonna say David's been positive in class. Um, he showed an outstanding uh, contribution. He's been a team worker. So he's helped uh, some of his, his peers in the classroom. We can um, send a letter home. If we give him verbal praise, we can actually report on that as well. And um, we can send a text message um, to the parent. So they get that instantly. Um, well, what I'm going to do is I am going to give David a gold, gold certificate. So within the system, behind these tick boxes, you can have all the next actions happening. So what this will do is create that gold certificate for David so it can be sent home. So if I press save and close, 
you'll see that it will create that form and you'll see a list of all the forms that have been created. And you can see it's created that form at the top there. Now, if I go into monitor and go into letter manager, it will create that letter for me ready to email out to the parent, social worker, carer, whoever it needs to go to. Okay, so you can see that it's created those free certificates at um, 1016. I can highlight that, go down to action, click on email, and I can choose exactly who I want to email that certificate out to. If you wanted to print it and give them a physical copy, you can. So you just click on print, and that is a print preview. So you can just print that and send it out. If I wanted to look back historically, um, I could just choose David. Choose everything that David has had, uh, say this academic year, click on go, and that's everything that David's had sent out. So through here, we can create um, end of term reports, which we can um, create a slip. So your form tutors, head teacher, deputy heads um, can put comments on the slip and they will feed through into the mail merge. Okay, so I'm gonna take you back to home. Now I'm going to show you another way of login um, behavior. So another way is the behavior register. So this is a quick and easy way of login behavior um, in the classroom. So choose a class. And what I've got here is a one to five system where one is a negative and five is your, your real top of the shop um, positive. If it's a negative mark, you can actually just uh, click on the button and it will give you um, some text to write. So you can actually put some of the information in there. And then once you've pressed submit register, it will add that data to the system and that will feed into your reports. Um, behind these, if I gave this child a five, so uh, Pietro, I'm gonna give him a five. Um, when I did press submit register, I can actually have it so it will create a gold certificate. And you can see once I press submit register, it will add that data to the system. We can add incident forms on here for you. So I'll just show you one that's uh, been filled in earlier. Um, if there's a victim, um, we can actually have a drop down of your students. We can also have a drop down of um, staff in there as well for you. Now, say we've got David and David has um, had a, a, a serious incident. Later on, after the form has been logged, another member of staff comes along and they want to um, put some notes down about the mentoring that they've, they've had with David. What they can actually do is they can go into the same form that's been logged earlier, put their notes in. Click on save. And as you will see, it will put Mr. Jones's electronic signature next to it. The notes that have been added and the date and time so it will date and time stamp it so you get a full audit trial of all of those good bits of work that your staff members have, have done around that behavior we can also add um, body maps to any of your forms so you can actually indicate if there's any sort of marks or or injuries antecedents so it's important to know with any of these tip boxes we can add as many of these tip boxes in here as you want. And you also have the option of, um, if there's a, a new behavior and you haven't seen that behavior before in your school, instead of putting it in a box called other, what you can do is call the support team and let them know um, of that behavior and they will add that tip box um, to the system for you. So then you can actually tick that box and that will feed through into the reports. Behind any of these 
but tick boxes, you can have what we call a real time notification. So instead of just having a real time notification on a specific form, you can have it on specific behaviors. So if you have a member of staff who's um, in charge of every uh, assault or every, say, racist incident, what they can actually do is set up a real time notification. And every time that box is ticked and a member of staff presses save and close, they will get that form emailed into their inbox. So straight away, they know about it and they can have that quick intervention or take care of the next actions. We can also, um, if you do have detentions, we can have, a, uh, have the system create an automatic detention. So you can just tell us um, what your parameters for your detentions are, when they happen, where they happen, um, is it a subject uh, detention? Um, that will just feed through into the detention register. And also add uh, if there was any exclusions and a debrief. So if I click on student debrief, I get a text box where I can actually write some information on uh, what's happened in that student debrief. You do also get the option to put a student um, on report from here as well. So as soon as I press save and close, it will show on the behavior register that they're on report. So whenever you fill in that behavior register, um, those um, behavior targets will actually be on there and then you can monitor them um, and you get the exact percentage um, that they hit during the day, during the week. We can also log physical interventions. So if there was a physical intervention, um, for example, this form is a, a team teach form. So whenever a form is logged, it will have a slip ID. So this is what we call a bound book slip. So this will replace your bound and numbered book and your PI form having to reference it. So every time there is a change made on this form, so uh, for example, one member of staff uh, fills it in um, and records the physical intervention. Um, if anybody else comes along or that same member of staff goes in after it's been created and makes a change, it will show the changes that they've made and when they've made it. So you've got the behaviours, the uh, management, de-escalation, nature of the risk, description, and you've also got the holds in there. So those are team teach holds. So um, whatever techniques you're using, we can actually add them to the system. And if there's additional members of staff, you can add them to the system as well. Uh, was there any staff injuries? Was there any pupil injuries? Um, any medical treatment required? And then every time one of these was filled in, um, that senior member of staff who takes care of physical interventions um, would receive an email notification um, where they'd go in and check it and they could close it if everything's complete and everything's fine with it. Um, or they can leave it open, investigate it further. As you can see, there's lots of different slips on here. Um, this one, the safeguarding slip, is a different kind of slip also. This is what we call a letterbox slip. So it means that everybody can post, but only um, your designated safeguarding leads will be able to see what has actually been posted in here. So everybody can just click on complete and that is an example of a safeguarding form. We can make this as uh, complex as you, you want it to or we can make it as simple as you want it to be. We can add body maps in there and it will also, uh, did you notify the DSL? You can also send a text message or an email um, to all the professionals working with that child. Um, it wouldn't give just anybody that option. It would only give the DSLs um, the option to actually send that information out. It won't send the form once it's been logged. What it will do is it will just send a notification. So they know something's been logged. And uh, rather than within a busy day, um, you forgetting to uh, call the professionals or whoever you need to let know. And um, what it will do is it will send a notification to them and they're more likely to actually call you so it's covered. Um, all of your DSLs will also um, receive a notification. Again, it won't send them the form because of the sensitivity of the information. It will just send them a notification and they can log in securely and look at that safeguarding um, log and deal with the next actions. Now, We've got lots of behavior reports. Um, I'm just gonna show you a few of these. So the first one 
is incidents over time. So we've been looking at David's behavior. So I'm um, gonna take the totals off and I'm gonna choose the filter tool. So I want to zero in on David's behavior and his serious incidents. So if I choose serious incidents, um, I choose a time frame, and I click on go. That is all of David's serious incidents by month. Now, we'd all agree that David looks, uh, he doesn't look like an angel there. So you can see he's, uh, in May, he had five um, serious incidents, which is quite a lot. Now, if I use the compare button, which I showed you earlier, you can choose the B filter. If I choose David again and choose serious incident, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you if David has actually got better over time or got worse. So I'm going to choose the year before. I click on go and side by side, you will actually see um, 2015 and 2016. If that's not clear enough, I can change that to an area graph. Um, that was David in the year, the year after, which we were looking at to start with. And that was David in the year before. So there's a clear picture um, that David is improving. Now, now we're talking about um, intervention strategies. With this report, you can actually look at David's individual behaviors. So then, the data will help you to create an intervention strategy for David and it will be evidence-based, which is really important. So down here, I'm gonna choose incidents. I'm gonna go into the filter tool and I'm gonna choose David so it zeroes in. And like I was telling you earlier, you can filter by information, negative and positive. So I'm gonna choose David's negative behavior. I'm gonna look at that same year and we're going to click on go now in this pie chart these large pieces of the pie are david's most prevalent behaviors so i'm just going to change this uh, just so it's a bit clearer to a bar chart so if you look along the bar chart you can actually see david's behaviors now i'm going to look at anything that david's done more than six times if I click on go, that shows you those exact behaviors that David's displaying, and those would be his behavior targets. So we might have an intervention um, based around those targets, and then you could maybe uh, put an intervention in place for um, a six-week period, and then you can come back and check it to see if it's improved or, or it's got worse. So then you're looking at the impact of your interventions. If I wanted to drill down, um, so I can see David's got 11 um, assault, assaults. I can actually just click on that bar and it will take me to the forms. Now, if I'm looking at all of these forms now, I can see a pattern there. So English, 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 one in art and the rest are English. So you can see that David has an issue when it comes to English. It may be um, teacher is asking him to write um, and he might not have been taught how to hold a pen properly uh, from a young age. So he might um, think in English, he might associate it with, with pain, but the data is actually showing you that the problem is English. So then that way that stands out to you and then you can actually investigate that further. You can see what period of the day, you can look at what locations, cause it might be a certain room that he has the, the issue in. And you can also drill down into the form as well if you need to. This one, Behaviour Radar, is a heat map. So you can actually see exactly what's going on around your school. So you've got your X and your Y axis. So I'm going to um, look at my students. So on the left, I'm going to have my student names. And at the top here, on the X axis, I am going to choose my slips. So I can see exactly what's been logged for each student. So I can see that David's had um, 92 merits this, this academic year. Um, there is a code here. So you can actually see um, with the color coding, anything that stands out very quickly. Now, I'm gonna just zero in on David's negative behavior. So there I can see is just his negative behavior. If I want to see, look at his positive behavior, that's all of David's positive 
behavior so you can see it's actually taken away all the negative behavior now if i want to see what day david displays um, his positive behavior on so this is going to show me just mondays so on mondays you can see he's had 20 merits so far um, i can also look at the periods of the day so when does david get his um, his slips for positive behavior if i wanted to change that to negative now i can actually see where he gets his negatives so you can see what time of the day david might need extra support in the classroom or it might be a, a lunch time uh, a break time i can even break it down to locations so where does david get his um his most of his incidents so room A39, so it might be when he's in room A39, he might need a, um, a, an extra member of staff in there or maybe a, a short mentoring session before he actually goes into, into that classroom. Looking at the filter tool, we can filter by all of these things. So you can filter by staff, uh, gender, first language, religion, ethnicity, postcode, free school meals, are they in care? You've got all of your different SEN types. So you can filter by SEN. You've got a bespoke categories list where we can add um, categories for you. You can also look by grouping. So houses, forms, classes, um, subjects, key stages. We even have behavior by weather. So this is accurate by the way, and it is linked to your local Met Office. So every time a member of staff presses save and close so we will look at david and we'll look at david's serious incidents for the uh, the same academic year it will show you the description of the weather the temperature atmospheric pressure which uh, i know you'll all um be able to um relate to me when I say um, with a lot of schools they, they say windy days will affect the child and you can also see um, humidity and the reason a school would use this um, and be able to and, and want to look into this in so much detail is you might have a child who shows um, an extreme behavior or a, a slightly worrying behavior um, in the in the classroom or around the school in a certain weather type um, a lot of members of staff will actually know um, what weather type it is that this child reacts to but with this you have that evidence to prove it so um, if the uh, behavior is um, leads to can lead maybe lead to an exclusion it might be that you put an intervention in place so if it is going wrong you can slip that child into that intervention um, prevent it escalating to maybe um, a, a, maybe a serious incident or an exclusion so you can see that your um, your exclusion rates will will maybe go down because you've looked that deeply into the the data we've got our points and prizes so uh, a great report is our quiet achievers of rope so what it can do is it will pick up all of your students that have no negatives but they're not quite at the top so you can actually catch them being good and make sure that they don't fall into negative behavior by giving them that praise you can also have a league table on here so if i um, I want to take all the points, so you can have a point system on the on here behind uh, the slips, and I want to take the points from all slips. Now this is showing me the highest ten in the school, but it's anonymized. So if I was with a parent, I could actually uh, scroll down to that student, and I can actually see exactly where they are. So you can see in 11A, David is top in his key stage. So key stage three, David is top for positives and in the school you can see that David David is top now if you were using detentions you can choose detentions and it will give you a full breakdown of the the amount of detentions given now using the filter tool if I want to look at David and I'm going to look at David this academic year 
that's the amount of detentions David has had this academic year. Now I can even break that down to minutes. So it will tell me exactly how many minutes David has been in detention this academic year. So again, with that intervention strategy, you can actually look at every aspect um, of David. So um, there might be a, a, re a reduction in the minutes by month, by week, um, by academic year. Um, and you can cor start correlating that with the interventions that you put in place. Um, we've got exclusion reports, uh, bullying reports, um, physical interventions. So if you are using physical interventions, um, that's the, the amount of physical interventions you would have had for that academic year. If I choose the filter, and again, I'm going to um, look into David's inter um, information. So you can see in that year, you can actually see exactly when David had that um, those uh, inter physical interventions. Now, I can look at that by seconds. I can also look at it by hold. So if I click on hold to break down, it will show me the exact amount of seconds that David has been held in all of those different holds. In our um, provision mapping um, section, we've got lots of reports in there as well. We've also got the SEMH profile. So if we look at the SEMH profile, you can actually, for every child, you can actually work through that. So you've got the different development strands. You can uh, score them 0 to 4 on those. Let's just uh, just scroll down just to show you some of those. And then once this is filled in, you can go to the reports and look at the SEMH profile. So your social, emotional and mental health uh, profile. This will show you um, where they are. That's the gap, and that's where they should be. The difference with, uh, with this is you can do comparisons. So you can compare um, year on year. You can compare by uh, categories. So you can look at um, different categories. And you can also look at um, year by year, like I said. Um, now, I'm going to give you the, um, the option to um, ask any questions um, that you might want to ask and um, I will answer them for you. Okay. Um, David has asked, do you have a practical example from your use of um, Behaviour Watch? Um, the example um, that I have is um, in a school, um, we, we had a child and um, I think it was Thursday morning, um, period two, what you would do is uh, the, the table would go up in the air um, and you just storm out, storm out of the classroom. Um, we, we use the, um, the behavior radar um, report and we could actually see um, that it was only happening um, at a certain period of the day um, in a certain classroom. So what I did was I, I went and sat in um, that lesson at the, um, the back of the classroom and just observed. And um, right on cue, David uh, flips the table and um, walks out of the, out of the classroom. Um, I looked um, at the blind and there was a blind missing. So 
there was actually the, the sun was actually shining into um the child's um eyes during the during the um the beginning of the class so um what we did spoke to the caretaker replaced the blind um six weeks later looked at um looked at uh, the data for that child and we could actually uh, see a, a massive reduction um in in him leaving the class it was um almost um instant um that he stopped leaving the class and the uh the reason he was, he was leaving the class, he was an autistic child and um, he couldn't actually uh, communicate that to the members of staff. So uh, the only thing that he could actually do um, to get out of the uh, well, the, uh, the situation that, that he was in, unco quite an uncomfortable um, situation with the sun in his eyes, was uh, to find a way to actually get out of the classroom. Um, so that was a, a quite a good example. Are there any more questions from, from anybody? Thank you for that question, David. Okay. Um, thank you very much for your time, everybody. Um, we will email out the uh, recording to you. So if you want to um, watch it again, um, you can. If you do need any more information, um, just um, please um, let, let us know um, and give them. Um, we do value your feedback. So it'd be good to have some feedback as well if we can. Okay. Thank you very much.